Welcome back Math 10. Today we are going to learn about surface area and volume of cylinders and prisms. So that's the surface area and volume, well since we say volume, of 3D shapes, okay? So to start off we're going to have to know some definitions here. 2D, which also means two-dimensional, refers to a two-dimensional shape. These shapes are flat and can be drawn on a piece of paper, usually worked with calculating perimeter and area. So that's 2D. Now, we're looking today more 3D, which is three-dimensional, okay? Now, this, what is a polygon? Well, poly means multi, and gon, well, it's like a shape. So a closed shape that consists of line segments, okay? With more than one side. So it's a closed shape with more than one side consists of line segments. Next one is a quadrilateral. So what does quad mean? Hmm, quad means four, okay? So quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. The next one is a square. Well, a square is a type of quadrilateral, a very specific type of quadrilateral. A square is all sides are equal, four sides, and all sides are equal, okay? They're equal length. And also, all angles, all corners must be 90 degrees. Next one here is a parallelogram. What is a parallelogram? Well, parallel, that means opposite sides must be parallel. Okay, so usually describes a slanted rectangle where opposite sides are parallel. Now, also if you look at this, a rectangle normally is also a parallelogram. Same with a square, it could be. Okay? Next one is a trapezoid or trapezium. This is a four sided shape with only one set of parallel lines. That is a trapezoid. Our next one is a triangle. What is a triangle? Well, you probably recognize this from way before. A triangle is a three-sided figure. And we have circle. What is a circle? Well, circle is a round shape. All points of the circle are equidistant from the center of the circle or from a point. So if I make a point and I draw around it, everything's equidistant from the center. Circumference is my perimeter of a circle. So distance around a circle. What is perimeter? Perimeter is the distance around a polygon, right? So it's like walking around, how far? It's the distance around a polygon, okay? Normally we do this by adding the length of each side together. Area, area is now what a two-dimensional shape or what a surface covers, okay? So it is the surface of a 2D object. A good way to visualize a surface area is to imagine coloring completely between the lines. So to imagine area, it's what we could shade or color between the lines. Height. Well, what is height? That's pretty simple. It is an object, it is of an object is perpendicular to the base. So the, an example of that would be looking at something like this here. So if I have this. My height is actually this here. It's perpendicular to the base. It is this line. Or I could say this line here must be perpendicular to the base. Okay? Now what does perpendicular mean? Well, perpendicular means it makes a right angle. Two lines that, that form a 9 degree angle. And the last one is vertex. Now a vertex is the point where two or more lines meet. Okay? So it's like a corner. So, now, I'm going to take us to our first little warm-up question. It says, for area, we only really need to know the area of a rectangle. Can you explain this and why? For area of any shape almost, we really need to know area of a rectangle. Well, if I look, here's a rectangle. Okay? We just have to go base multiplied by height, because that's how we shade it in. We have base multiplied by height. Now, let's take a look at a, tra uh, a trapezoid. Okay, here's my trapezoid. So I have A, B, and then my height is like that, H. Now, if I cut this piece off here and put that here, it's going to kind of look like that, isn't it? So we want the average of A and B here. If I go A plus B, that gives me my average height because it's not quite all of B, it's not quite all of A, is it? It's a bit more than A, this site now, and it's a bit less than B, so we want the average between those two. 
So my area is equal to A plus B divided by 2, and then we multiply by my height. And that's it. Okay? Because we kind of make this, I cut this piece off and moved it there, I kind of made it into its own rectangle. Another one will be a parallelogram. So a parallelogram looks like this. Alright? Now if I cut this piece off here and put that here, now we have a rectangle. And this is H. And this is my width or my base. So my width or my base is the same. So it is. This doesn't change because this just moves there, so it's really the same. This width here doesn't change because it just got pushed from here and extended that way. So it still is area is equal to base times height. All right? Now, let's take a look at a triangle. If I have a triangle like that, all I have to do is add the same triangle to it and I end up getting a parallelogram. Huh. Right? I just add another triangle, so I end up getting a parallelogram. And the area of a parallelogram we know is base times height. But we only want half because a triangle, we just doubled it and flipped it over there. It's just divided by 2. Okay? And then if we looked at more shapes like a pentagon, something like this. Okay? If I look at this, this is just a triangle and a rectangle. Or we could make it as three triangles. Something like that. So basically, it's still based off a rectangle. We just add those shapes together. And that's how we find the area. Now the last one I want to look at is a circle. So now, if I take a look at this circle here, I cut it off into many pieces, right? Now the red is one half of the circle, and the blue is the other half of the circle. So, as a reminder, what is circumference of a circle? Circumference of the circle is just pi times diameter, or it is 2 pi r. Okay? So, let's just look at that again. Circumference of a circle is, is equal to circumference of a circle is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter, or 2 pi r. Okay? That is my circumference of a circle. How they do that? All they did was they said, they kept on looking at this, and they kept on dividing uh, the circumference of the circle, the distance, when they measured it by the diameter, and said, hey, look at this, we keep on getting pi. And that's how they found pi, actually. So pi is pi times diameter is equal to circumference, or 2 times the radius, because diameter is equal to 2 multiplied by the radius is equal to circumference, right? So let's go back to my little picture here. So basically, I have this circle, okay? Half is red, half is blue. Now look what happens when I cut into pieces and put them together like that. Now my top here is half a circumference or my base is half the circumference. My height, if I cut this off enough times, maybe infinitely small, will be my radius. Okay? So my height is my radius. The area of a, parallel, of a parallelogram is base times height. So then the area of a circle is pi r r, or pi r squared. Okay? And that's how we get the area of a circle. So we just cut it down. So think of these being cut into infinitely smaller pieces. It will be more of a rectangle and less of a parallelogram. And that's how we'll find the height. Okay? So that's how that one works. Now, my next part here is, what is the formula for volume of a rectangular prism? Well, what does volume mean? Volume means layers of area. So how many layers of area we have. So, of a rectangular prism, it is just going to be base times height multiplied by depth. Okay? So base times height multiplied by the depth, or how many layers. You could say L for layers too. If you want, you could say L. Okay? What is the volume of a triangular prism? Well, a triangular prism kind of looks like this. There's my triangle, goes like that. There's my triangular prism. Okay? Well, my triangular prism. I have which face is being repeated? My triangle is being repeated, not my rectangle, because if I start slicing this one, this rectangle, we're going to start losing faces. If we slice this way, keep on taking the slices of this guy here, it's going to go like this. So my 
faces, my slices are going to get smaller. The only ones where the slices won't change in size are if we cut the triangles like that and we cut it that way. So my volume is going to be equal to the area of a triangle, which is my base face call. The area of a triangle, which is base times height divided by two, multiplied by how many layers of that triangle there are, okay? Because that's the only layer that doesn't change. And that's how we find my volume, or by my depth of it, okay? So now let's look at our first real example. It says, consider the following triangle prism, okay? We want to determine the area of the base. Well, my base of the prism, okay, is going to be the triangle. That's the only shape that's not changing. If I take layers and I slice it like this, I'll have little layers of triangles. If I take and I slice this way, look, my slices are changing size of rectangles. So the triangle is the one that doesn't change. So I want to find the area of a triangle. Well, that's equal to base times height divided by two. Looking at my triangle, I need to know my base and my height. Well, my base is 10, okay? My height is this line here, which we don't know. In order to find this, I have to look at this triangle right here. Okay, and I know that this distance is 5 for this triangle, and this is 13. This is my hypotenuse. So I know, and we're c squared, use Pythagorean theorem, is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, now we know this part here is 5, and this is my hypotenuse. So in other words, we're trying to find a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. So we're trying to find one of the legs which is going to give me 13 squared minus 5 squared, okay? Which gives me 169 minus 25 is going to give me the square root of 144, which is equal to 12. Now, we know this is 12, so I could find this out. So we have base times height, which is 10 times 12 divided by 2, which will give me 60. And this is in centimeters squared. Now it says determine the volume of the prism. Well, the volume wants to know how many layers we have of our triangle. So I'm going by how many layers, right? If I look at this way, the triangle is the only one that changes, not the rectangle. The volume is, of the triangle prism, is equal to base times height divided by 2 multiplied by my depth. Well, my depth is, we're going 6 centimeters of triangle down. So I have, well, I know the area of a triangle is 60 from before, and I'm going to multiply that by 6, which will end up getting me 60 times 6 is 60, 0, 360 centimeters cubed. All right? The next one says determine the surface area of the prism. Well, looking at this here, let's count how many faces I have. I have 1 face, that is 10 by 6, okay? That's this face here. I have two faces that are 13 by 6. And I have two faces that are triangles, where this is 12 by 10, okay? Now, surface area wants me to add all these faces together. So, total surface area is equal to my length times width, or base times height, plus my 2, length 2, this is shape 1, 2, 3, length 2, width 2, plus 2, base times height, divided by 2. I'll just use that one for this. Now if I look at this, these 2's will cancel off nicely. So what are we left with? 10 by 6. plus 2 multiplied by 13 by 6, plus, then we have 10 by 10 times 12. Which will end up giving me, altogether, 336 centimeters squared. Okay? And that's it. Now, my next question here says, Cubicle lid needed a plastic container 15 centimeters long, 10 centimeters deep, and 8 centimeters high, in which to pack the 1 centimeter sponge cubes to sell to an elementary school. Alright? 
Water World Aquariums need small glass aquariums of the same dimensions in which to keep their uh, samurai fighting fish. Calculate the water volume of the container of cubical lid in centimeters cubed with appropriate unit to represent the volume of the container. Well, this is going to be a rectangular prism, so my volume is equal to base times height multiplied by my depth. Okay? So that's going to be equal to, we know it's 15 by 10 by 8. Which is the same as 1,200 centimeters cubed. Okay? Now, it also wants to know uh, an appropriate unit to represent the volume. Is this appropriate? I would say yes. Why is it appropriate? Because we're using solids and we're using these cubes. We want to know how many one centimeter cube sponges can fit in there. So we're going to keep it in centimeters cubed, not liters, not milliliters. We're going centimeters cubed because it wants to know how many of those sponges it can hold. Now the next part is the small glass aquarium for water world aquariums will be filled with water. The volume or capacity of the aquarium is given in liters or U.S. gallons. Determine, this is a big thing, liters or U.S. gallons, determine the capacity of the glass aquarium in both liters and U.S. gallons to two decimal places. So we know the volume is equal to uh, 1,200 centimeters cubed. Well, that's the same thing as 1,200 milliliters. Okay? Now, how many milliliters are in a liter? A thousand. So I'm going to multiply this by, we have one over one thousand. So milliliters down there, liters on top. Units will cancel off. Oops, just units. So I end up getting 1.2 liters of water it will hold. Now, I want to convert this into gallons. So my volume converted into gallons. Well, we have a little... If you look on your formula sheet, you'll find something that will help you out. We know 1.2 liters, and per one gallon, US is equivalent to 3.7854 liters. So we want to cancel off liters and make a gallon. So one gallon all over 3.7854. And we have liters. My liters will cancel off. Okay, I'm going to be ending up with 0 0.32 gallons. My next one here, surface area of a cylinder. We have shapes drawn. So what do we have to do? Okay, what shapes do we have? We have two circles and a rectangle. Okay? And a rectangle. Now, what is the base? of the rectangle equal to. So if we look at this rectangle here, that's going to have to equal to the circumference of the circle because it must wrap itself all the way around the circle. So it's equal to circumference. Okay? Use the general rule that we came up for prisms to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Well, the volume of the cylinder is going to be, well, my face that doesn't change, if I look at it and I cut it this way, it's always going to be a circle. If I cut this way, we're either narrow, getting wider, 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 then back to narrower again. So we have to cut it circle. So the circle face is the one that doesn't change when we're doing slices. So we have slices of circles. So volume is equal to pi r squared, area of a circle, multiplied by my depth. And that's it. So here is my first example. Calculate the volume and surface area of a cylinder whose height is 15.4 centimeters. Okay, so we have this. We have 15.4 centimeters and the diameter of 10.2. So circle, circle, and we have this here is 10.2 centimeters. Write your answer to the correct one decimal point. Okay, so one decimal place. So let's first find my volume. Volume is equal to pi r squared multiplied by my depth, or height in this case. So half of this is going to be 5.1. So we have pi multiplied by 
squared multiplied by 15.4. centimeters cubed. Okay? So that is my height. Now, or that's my volume. Now we want to find my surface area. Well, what do I have? I have two circles. So I have two, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay? Plus, we want my area. Now, what else do we have here? Plus, we have this multiplied by the circumference. So, base times height. Or, in other words, my base is equal to circumference, which is equal to pi multiplied by d, right? So when we plug this in, we're going to have 2, 3.14, multiplied by my radius, which is 5.1, plus my base, which is actually my circumference, which is pi multiplied by 10.2, okay? Then we have to multiply it by my height, which is 15.4. If I plug this all into my calculator, I'm going to get 656.9 centimeters squared. Okay? And that's it. All right, class example number four. It says, a commercial garbage bin shaped of a, in the shape of a cube has a volume of 60.24 meters cubed. Determine the dimensions of the bin to the nearest centimeter. Okay, so we have a cube. So in this case, we know volume of a cube, each side is the same, is base times height times width, but we know base is equal to height, which is equal to width, so that's kind of like saying side cubed. So we have 60.24 is equal to side cubed, so I'm just going to cube root both sides, and that will end up giving me a total of 3.9. So that's 3.92 meters, or near centimeter, 392 centimeters. Next one here, we're looking at a box of Toblerone chocolates. Now we know the a Toblerone chocolate is a rectangular or a triangular prism that looks kind of like this. Okay? Now, we know the triangular face has a base of 3.7. So this is 3.7. Okay? And a height of 3.2. So 3.2. Okay? If the space of the box is empty and has a volume of that, determine the length of the box to the nearest centimeter. Hmm. So we want to find the length of the box. So volume is equal to, in this case, base times height divided by 2 multiplied by my depth. We know the volume is 130 or 123.7 multi uh, and then we have 3.7 multiplied by 3.2 and we divide that by 2 and then we have to multiply by the depth. Okay? So, rearranging this, I'm going to end up getting D is equal to 1, 2, 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, point 7, multiplied by 2, and we have to divide this by 3.7, multiplied by 3.2, okay? All I did was I multiplied 2 to this side, then I divided it by 3.7, and divide by 3.2, and what I do here, I must do to this side. Okay? That's all I did, was to rearrange. Now I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to get 20.895 centimeters is the length of the total box. So our last question here, we have a poster company has decided that all of its posters will be shipped in cylindrical cylinders with a height of 17 inches and a circumference of 2 inches. The curved surface area of the container will be wrapped with the company logo. So now it wants us to calculate to the nearest square inch the curved surface area of wrapping the container. Okay? So once again, we're going to need surface area. So we have a cylinder. If you remember, the net of a cylinder looks something like this. And the part we only want to know is this shaded area here, the rectangle, the part that wraps all the way around. 
So this will wrap all the way around. So my base is equal to 2 pi r or pi d. Okay? And we have a height. So area is equal to 2 pi r multiplied by my height. Okay? And we have the circumference of 2 inches. Well, we know the circumference of the circle is 2 inches. So I could just put in 2 multiplied by this here is equal to 2 multiplied by my height of 17, which will give me 34 inches squared. All right?